Okay, this is podcast number two, and it's where we're going to define some fluid properties. So fluid properties, just as in solids, we have density. Density is given the Greek symbol rho, and is defined as the mass per unit volume, and as units of kilograms per meter cubed. The specific, the specific weight is quite similar, except it's the density multiplied by gravity, and has newtons per meter cubed as its units. Specific gravity, given the Greek symbol gamma, is the ratio of specific weight of a fluid to the specific weight of water, which therefore is also equal to the ratio of the density of the fluid to the density of water. So if we take, for example, mercury, which has, which has a density of about 13,600 kilograms per meter cubed, we generally refer to its specific gravity as the number smaller, and therefore the specific gravity of uh, mercury is 13.6. Our second uh, property of a fluid is compressibility. Now, the degree of compressibility of a substance is characterized as the bulk modulus of elasticity, and this is given a symbol K, and is defined as the pressure increment divided by the compressive volume strain. Now, before we go any further, let's take a look at uh, compressive volume strain, or strain. strain to start with. So strain is generally defined as the increase in length delta L over its original length L. So the, if, for example, I had an elastic band which was about one meter in length and I stretched it until it was about 1.5 meters in length, the increase would be 0.5. So delta L would equal 0 0.5 meters. The original length was one meter, therefore the strain would equal 0 0.5 over one, or 50%. Okay, so when we're looking at compressive volume strain, it's a little bit different. We take the original volume, V, and we compress it that reduces the volume slightly by, by a value of about delta V. Now because this is compressive, it's negative. Therefore the strain, or the compressive volume strain, is equal to delta V over V, also written as dP dV. And as I said, sorry, dV dV, and as I said, that must be negative as it's compressive. Okay, so back to the slides. The bulk modulus of elasticity K, therefore, is equal to dP, which is the pressure increment, the increase in pressure, divided by minus dV dV, which is equal to minus V dP dV. Okay, so let's take a look at a brief demonstration to look at the difference in compressibility of different fluids. So here we have a simple bottle of water, and inside it I have a small weight that is held up by a little gas bubble. Now if I am to press on this bottle, as I am doing at the bottom, I'm putting the same pressure on both the water and the air. Now this has the effect of compressing both of them, or putting the same pressure on both of them. This is the effect, however, of compressing the air and not the water. The reason for this is air and gases in general will be more compressive. They have a much larger um, bulk modulus of elasticity than water. Essentially, liquids are considered to be incompressible. And if we go back to the slides now, we'll see the effect of this for both air, or the comparison between both air and water. Here's a typical graph, or here's some experimental data, that shows the variation of the pressure <coughs> versus volume for both water and air. As you can see, if I increase the pressure of the water from atmospheric pressure, which is one bar, to a pressure of about 100 bar, so that's 100 times atmospheric pressure, the volume stays at about 99% of its original volume. Air, on the other hand, if I increase from atmospheric pressure, which is what we're at now, to about 20 bar, so 20 times atmospheric pressure, its volume has decreased to about 5% of its original volume. Another fluid property that we want to look at is surface tension. 
It's not something that we're going to deal with a lot in this course, but it's worth knowing, and it's something that you've probably observed from time to time. Take, for example, on the left there, you've seen capillary rise, which has the effect of um, this lipping of the surface of the water up against um, solid edges. Water jets and small drops also tend to form or stay together, and this is all down to surface tension. Liquids essentially behave as if they have a free surface, uh, as if their surf the free surface was perfectly flexible membranes having a constant tension per unit width. And surface tension is therefore given the symbol sigma and has the units of newtons per meter. So it's a tension per meter. As you can see in the diagrams on the right and left, surface tension for the same fluid can be quite different. On the top one there you see it's hydrophilic, meaning that it wets the surface. On the bottom one it's uh, hydrophobic, meaning that it beads up. And we see this um, such as if you'd seen water on uh, wax jackets or on Teflon, as opposed to water on cotton where it would soak in. So surface tension is not just a fluid property, it's a property that changes depending on the solid in which it is in contact. Okay, that completes podcast number two where you've dealt with fluid properties.